I would like to speak a little bit about what I call the Swedish way. Uh, I would like to invite you to a journey, to a historical journey, because if you ask me, from my point of view, you have to be aware of what we have done and where we are now to be able to look into the future. And first of all, a very short presentation of VTI. Uh, VTI is a research institute and we are absolutely freestanding from any commercial things. We are directly organized under the government. So we, you can say that we are owned by the government. And VTI is only located in Sweden and the main office is in, in Linköping and we have offices in other towns on, as well. And here you can see some of the research areas that VTI are dealing with. We are doing quite a lot of things, as you see. But of course, the most important areas is traffic safety. Uh, here you can see uh, small things, of, of a small uh, view of what we are doing for what we call big resources, technical resources. We have crash test tracks, both indoors and outdoors. For example, you can see a car here crashing into a guardrail. We have uh, driving simulators. Uh, we have put a real car into a simulator and actually simulating that you are driving as soon, as close to the real life as possible. And we are doing friction tests and, uh, and uh, monitoring of, of the road with other vehicles. But let's get over to the real thing. Today, I will, you will hear me say CRS, ECRS, or some, uh, some words like this, but everything is child seat. The reason why I'm using CRS, this is from the, the regulation or the protocols, I'm used to use the word CRS El instead motive. of child seat. Why so convinced? Why is Sweden so absolutely convinced about rearward facing? If you ask me, there's three reasons for it. There's results from the research, and how the child is built, so to speak. And last but not least, real fact from real life. In Sweden, we started the right, uh, right way, almost. Uh, this is actually a CRS from the early 60s. Uh, you could even find a luxury model, because the, the luxury model has a steering wheel here for the child. This is a very old one, and I'm not sure if everyone in this room has seen such a thing. You can see here, we are trying to restrain the child inside the CRS. But if you look here, you have hooks here, chrome tubes. They're supposed to be over the backrest of the second row seat. And normally they put it in the middle position in the car. That means if there was a crash, the child, uh, together with the child seat, have absolutely free way directly to the windscreen. But that was in those days. But very early, back in the 60s, it started with, to happen something. Uh, the whole journey actually started in the 60s, and the idea behind the rearward facing was actually <coughs> the astronauts, the space program. So the rearward facing has to thank the, 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 the rockets. And here's the ID and the man. I'm sure you have seen on TV or something like that, when they are launching a rocket to the sky, the astronaut is actually lying down, more or less flat, like in a child seat, like this. And that's the reason for that is supporting the back and the neck and the head. And Bertil Alman, who was a professor at Chalmers in Gothenburg, saw that, that when they were launching the rockets. So Bertil Alman started with the rearward facing. And very soon VTI and Bertil Alman started to collaborate in research programs. And here you can actually see a prototype of a rearward facing CRS, the first prototype in the world. You can see it down here. It's more or less looking like a, a, a chair from the 50s. So you can see it into the old Volvo here, and it's supported by the dashboard. And this is a full-scale crash test, the first full-scale crash test in the world with a rearward-facing CRS. And today is 50 years, 54 years since the first test, so we started quite early in Sweden with rearward-facing. 
And um, during the 60s, we did a lot of research uh, regarding rearward facing and forward facing systems. Uh, and it continued in the, into the 70s. And there was a lot, a lot of dynamic tests, and there was a lot of thoughts, and there was a lot of discussion in Sweden about this. But the outcome from all these research and those thoughts was still very, very clear. So rearward facing was absolutely superior. And why is rearward facing so important? Uh, you can look here. If you take me, for instance, if my body mass is X kilos, five to six percent of my total body mass is the head. And if you look here, around newborn or one year, it's a, approximately 25 percent of the body mass is in the head. So a child is not, not a scaled down adult. And this ended up, all this research and everything ended up in 1975. Uh, we call it in Sweden the T approval. So TSV, uh, former Swedish Transport Administration and VTI sat down and wrote the protocol how to test the CRS. So, in 1975, it was possible to have an approved child seat in Sweden. Uh, the T-approval, what we did was to measure the G-forces in the head and the G-forces in, in, in the chest. And by saying G-forces, I'm talking about acceleration. If I'm standing here, I have one G on me. If I start to go in a rocket, I have perhaps five, six, seven Gs in force on my body. So it's not correct to translate it into force, but to, to get an, an idea of what we're talking about, is you can call it a force. And in the T approval, we measure the head, as I said, and the chest. Uh, that's very important, but also it's important that we could compare. If we have a, a lot of accelerations in the head and zero accelerations in the head, that means that the neck was very stressed. So at least we have an indication of the neck forces. And the T approval. You, the two, you can call it very clever or you might can call it pragmatic. I'm not sure it's possible to do it this way today, what we did in 1975. I'm going to tell you a secret. As I said before, we, we performed a lot of tests. And if the level of G forces, for instance in the head, of the forward facing was here when we measured the measure, when we measured the forces. And when we performed the test with the rearward facing, the, limit, the, the, the forces was here. And in the approval text, we put the limit line here. And that means it was totally impossible to have an approved forward facing system. And as I said, probably not the way we do it today, but it was, if you ask me, it was a very good way to do it. So the Swedish parents was absolutely without any options. Because if you look at the market in Sweden in those days, you couldn't find any forward-facing system that was approved. So what we did was to force the Swedish people to use rearward-facing. So if you go today on the street and ask a parent, so describe a, a child seat for me. Instantly, 95% start to speak about the rearward facing system because that's what's in their mind. But it starts to happen things uh, around the Europe also. So 19, uh, in the late 80s, uh, beginning of the 80s, we sat down a couple of countries. Sweden was among them. And we have Germany, UK, uh, we have several other countries. And sat down and wrote the first regulation, the European regulation, or the UN regulation, and it was called regulation number 44. But there was something wrong with this regulation, if you ask me, because they have no limit for the head. No, you remember the Swedish T regulation, the T standard, we measure the head. In the EC regulation number 44, no limit lines, no limits for the head. And my personal opinion about this is there is no technical reason for it. It's only political. But that's my personal believing. And here you can see in historical order what happened. Uh, 
A regulation is not a static document, it's a living document. It changes all the time. You can see here uh, the T approval, and then you have regulation 44, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's living all the time, it's developing. And here also in the, in the bottom you see the new regulation for child seat, regulation 129. And here in 2009 you'll see the plus test I will. In Sweden we have double approval up to the year 2008. That means that we have the T approval, a label on the CRS, and we have regulation 44, the same, uh, th that label. So all, almost all seat has double approval. And the reason for that was that the T approval take care of something and the regulation 44 take care of other things. So together, this was a very good child seat. And in the mid-90s, Sweden was a member of the European Union. And I'm in favor of the European Union. I'm not against it. I'm in favor of it. But there was something wrong there. Because we were not allowed to have national uh, regulations for that. So 1994, we should have stopped it. And normally Sweden tend to be, try to be the best in the class uh, regarding the European Union. We try to do everything correct. But this time we was a bit naughty. We did like this. Ooh, we don't hear anything at all. But it was a lot of rumble down in the European Union. So in 2008, we have to take it away. And when they called me and say from the trans transport administration and said we have to take it away, it was a very, very sad day for me. So I went into my office and sat there and was absolutely furious. How can it be that we are now are going to lower the safety level for our Swedish children? Is this possible? And to tell you the truth, I was mad. And that was the beginning of the PLUS test. So since 2009 we had the PLUS test. And what is PLUS test? You can say it's a modern way of the T approval because that's happened a lot with the CRS, with the cars, the roads and so on. We have a little bit higher speed, but speed is not so important. What we have is a very short braking distance that we will call a higher grade of deceleration, a tougher pulse. And we are measuring the neck forces in this test. And it's a volunteer test. The European Union couldn't say anything at all. There was a way to solve the problem. Pragmatic. And here is the limit line for the, for the plus test. If you have a seat, a child seat up to 18 kilos, uh, that normally means that you have a, a three-year-old dummy inside. It's 12, 20 newtons. And if you have a little bit uh, bigger rear facing or uh, CRSs, you're up to 16 uh, 140 newtons. That's at the limit line. And this limit line is very, very tough. And when I'm talking about neck forces, we call them F-set. That's a technical description. But you can say you are trying to rip the head off. You're doing, trying to do like this. That's the neck forces I'm talking about. And here you can see the label, if you have passed all the tests. So if you find this label on a CRS, you could immediately believe, the, you know, believe in this is a really good CRS because th this CRS has been taken account the neck forces and have been tested for that. It's a bit of a modern label because uh, I'm not sure everybody re realized this. This is the head, this is the torso, and this is the leg of the child. But I think everybody understands the plus something positive. I would like to show you, this is from a real crash test. Uh, we took a Volvo V40, we crashed it into a barrier in 56 kilometers per hour. In the rear seat, we put three, two exactly the same dummies, Q3 they call them. One was put in a rearward facing CRS and one was put in a forward facing CRS. So exactly the same car, the same dummy, the same crash, but different in rearward and forward facing. And here you see that F set that I was talking about, the stretching forces in the neck, the neck forces. And the black line here is from the forward facing, the measurements. And the red line here is the measurements from the rearward facing. 
and as, as you see, almost seven times higher stretching forces in the neck in a forward-facing system. Seven times higher. And um, I was speaking about the uh, two regulations for, reward uh, for, for uh, child seats. This 129 and regulation 44, the 129 is the newer one. And I would like to show you the, the main difference between those two regulations. And here is the uh, general differences. Uh, reward facing up to 15 months in regulation 129. Uh, so it's mandatory. For Sweden, if you ask me, it's, it's, it's nothing because we travel reward facing much, much longer. But if you look in, into the central Europe, I think it's more or less like the French Revolution. Uh, we have side impacts, we have new mannequins and new dummies, we have limits for the head and the abdomen. But as I said, we have a new regulation for child seat. But still, no limits for the neck force. Just a short picture on showing how it could look like in a lab. I was talking about the side impact in regulation one to nine. Here you put the child seat on the bench and you put the dummy in and then the bench or the dummy, the trolley is traveling in this direction and this part is supposed to be a door who is, so to speak, intruding in to, to, and, and push the whole system. And this is just to give you an idea what the side impact is in a lab. In regulation one to nine, you have an expression, you find it on the market today, it's called eye size. And what is eye size? You might call it super isofix if you want. Uh, it's very simple, because if you have an eye source logo in the car, you see the logo in the car, and you see the logo on the child seat, you know it fits. It's what we call plug and play, very simple. The same logo, no mistakes, poof and it works. So hopefully less misuse. But there is still something that are not covered by the regulation one to nine. That's what we call the booster cushions. They are still in regulation 44. TSG is the same as the technical service group. I'm a, I'm a member of that group. We are trying to solve the problem and, and write the regulation or write the text and how to test and so on. So this booster cushion also should be a part of regulation one to nine, eventually, hopefully. But is this really true? Is it true that rearward facing is better? Yes, if you ask me. But how can we know that? If you ask me by looking at the outcome for the real world, that's hard fact. Here you can see figures from 1972 down here and up to 15. Uh, the slide is too short, so I don't have 16 and 17 there. But it's one child killed every year there also. Uh, what is interesting in this graph is don't look at every single thing. Look at the angle, how it has decreased over the years the fatalities on, in the cars. And, and Sweden is a small country with a, with a small number of people, but, but keep this also in mind. In 1972, we have approximately one million cars on the road. And today, we have over four million cars on the road. And the traveling kilometers per every child is higher. And if you ask me, I think the reason behind these figures, of course, we have better cars, we have better roads, and so on. But if you ask me, my belief is the main cause is the rearward facing system. We did a comparison between Germany and Sweden in 1999. And I want you to focus on this part. Don't, don't even think, look at this one. In the beginning, here is the the, the, the age of the, of the children. So around newborn, we are quite similar in fertilities with Germany. But if you look here, when the child is around one, oh, sorry, uh, one year, something very dramatically happens because this is the Germany. And back in 1999, uh, Germany 
normally switch for forward facing between nine months and one year, the age of the child. And the child. I can see it in your eyes. There's an old man standing here, chattering about something from 1999. It's not really up to date, but it's the same figures between 2006 and 11. You have the same thing happen here. So if you ask me, it's more or less the same thing. I would like to show you two films, two movies. And remember this, this is in, in the VTI crash lab. And we have the same trolley. We have the same speed. We have the same stopping distance, and we have the same CRS. <coughs> and the dummy is supposed to be three years, three years old. The only difference between those two tests is that one is rearward facing, another one is forward facing. And it's possible by changing the base of this particular CRS. You see the base here. It's possible to change that and to make the same so to speak, shell or the CRS, forward facing or rearward facing. And this is 50 kilometers per hour, a normal crash in a town. You can just imagine what will happen to the neck. Imagine the, stretch for, uh, the stress of the neck. And now I would like to show you the rearward facing. And now when the head is coming out of the CRS, all the forces is gone. So what the dummy is trying to tell you is, Thank you for a nice ride. But why? Why all, all research? Why the regulation? Why the plus test? Why the engagement from VTI? And why all the discussions? And why today's event today? There is the reason. Please do not ever forget that. <laughs> <laughs>